There we go. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Are we still live? I'm telling you today, the enemy Goodbye. is like, <laughs> oh my God. Where does, is it live? Yes, Hi. live. Hi, everyone, <laughs> forgive us. Oh my God, it's been a while and I'm like being like a little bit complicated with this new um, coming back on. I mean, it's kind of like forgot about it. Um, but anyway, um, we are coming live with you to you uh, one more time. Can you check on our Facebook? We're coming to you live one more time. Um, send it to groups. It's going to say share and it's going to say groups and uh, triumphant and um, family. And put up here expectation and relationship and share it. Um, hi, 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 everyone. Welcome, welcome, work, welcome back to Worth the True. We was having a little bit of technical difficulties, um, but as promised, I said we was going to do at least once a month um, starting this month. Um, so now we are um, starting today with um, the topic of expectations in relationship. And um, we are going to be... Um, talking about spiritual and natural um, expectations uh, in our relationship. We're also going to talk about family expectations in relationship. We're going to also be talking about, um, you know, um, acquaintances, co-workers, et cetera, everything that has to do with, et cetera, <laughs> everything that has to do with <laughs> um, relationship. Um, also, um, um, Sister Chris Lynn Robinson, Evangelist Chris Lynn Robinson was supposed to be a part um, with us today. And also Tony Millard, my, my dearest sweet cousin. I hope she's watching us from wherever she at. I hope she has um, reception. She is on a lovely cruise with her family and that's why she couldn't be here today. And our dearest um, Evangelist Chris Lynn Robinson lost her brother and they actually having the funeral today. So um, we just want to um, say that, you know, we are so sorry. We send our condolences, our love, and we are praying um, God's strength upon their family. So um, also my brother, um, Minister Orville Brown, is, um, is going to grace us today um, with his presence. So we are just... Um, you know, waiting for his connection to come in, but we are going to start. And um, first, I just want to say that expectations, what are expectations? Expectations are a strong belief that something will happen or be the case in the future, a sense of fulfillment or achievement, um, hope, self, um, center and self-serving. So when you expect something, it's something that you're hoping for it to happen. You want, um, you, it's something that you are praying about, that you are believing God about, um, you know, um, I know, um, just pray for my brother. He's, he's trying to come on, you know, my sibling, um, and, and he's just having a problem coming on, but, um, you know, we, we are going to speak about realistic also and unrealistic expectations. Um, so I'm going to start with, um, I wrote something at the very end of everything that I was doing because I was looking up some stuff. In John 3.16, it says Jesus loved, loved the world so much that he gave. And that's one of the things that um, we have to expect in relationship. You have to be a, a um, a giving, a giving person, you have to be able to give of yourself. You got to give your time. You got to give of your finances. You can't go into, um, a relationship being selfish. You can't, cannot go into a relationship, um, being one-sided with the me, you know, there's no I in team and everybody knows that a team means two people working together for the one great common good. So you can't go into a relationship thinking that everything is going to be your way. This is not Burger King. This is, um, you know, 
a relationship that you want to invest in, that you want um, in, and investing, like I said before, you got to invest your time. You got to invest um, yourself. You know, um, a lot of people um, think that, um, you know, and you have to allow the other person to be themselves. You got to be able to be yourself. And you also have to allow the other person to be yourself themselves. You cannot go into a relationship trying to control somebody or trying to control the environment where the person is going to live in. Whether you live in an apartment or you live in, an, in a house, you cannot go in with a controlling and manipulative attitude. If you do this, then I'll do that. That's controlling. You know, you can't go in um, to a relationship, um, you know, thinking that the person is supposed to only serve you and your purpose, but you're not supposed to do anything about the other person or serve their purpose. You know, um, I heard somebody said this and it stuck with me. When you praying for um, a spouse, um, whether it's a female or a male, you are you supposed to ask God to um, help you find a purpose partner, meaning that, you know, you're going to have um, purpose together, that there's going to be not, not only a union where you're going to enjoy, you know, um, but also, um, you, you have, um, you know, spiritually, a spiritual connection with that person. Um, one of the things that I saw that, um, God was, um, you know, God was, um, he was also caring, you know, he cared about people, like he cared about people's conditions like you know we we saw in the bible how he he went and he healed different people because he cared about their condition he cared about their situation so in a relationship you're supposed to also be caring you're supposed to care about the person you know and we have a perfect example in john chapter 6 verses 1 to 14 where he speaks about the five loaves and the two fish you know the, these people followed him for a couple of days because of the miracle signs and wonders that he was doing and because of that they sat and they, at his feet they followed him and he understood that they needed nourishment for their body so in a relationship especially if you are male, you're supposed to be a provider. So that's what Jesus showed us, that he is a provider. He showed us also um, that he is also giving, that he is also caring, that he is also loving. You know, he did um, show, demonstrate his love um, towards us. Um, you know, when he went, died on the cross and gave his all for us, all right, um, my brother was able to come on. So we just talking about expectations, um, spiritually, naturally, um, realistic and unrealistic um, expectations. I also wrote down a couple of um, realistic and unrealistic um, expectations. One of the um, realistic expectation is um, attaining things, you know, um, getting things together, building things together. You know, building a, a, a home, um, you know, uh, because a house, it, it, you can have a house, but not a home. So building a home together, meaning, um, you know, come from getting to a place of compromise. A lot of people don't want to compromise. You know, um, some people are introvert. Other people are extrovert. You know, you have to come to a place of compromise. Like, say, like me, I like to travel. Um I, and that's one of the things that give me much pleasure and joy. So um, if I, God, God grant me my heart's desire and he brings somebody into my life to marry. Um, and the person is not a like, you know, a person that likes to be going here and there or vacationing. You know, you have to come to a place of compromise. Like you can't marry the person or you can't marry me and keep me in the house the whole time. <laughs> like the whole year, 365 and another year came and oh yes, let's, let's do local things. No, I want to go see this good old earth that God, you know, created. There's some beautiful places that I want to see, you know, without, without, um, without destroying the budget, you know. So those are, um, are different things, but yes, I would like to go on vacation at least once or twice. So I'm just throwing that out there. 
The other thing is learn your lang your love language. And we know that the love languages are affirmations. You know, everybody likes to be affirmed. You know, everybody likes to be um, told, you know, I love you, you look beautiful, you know, you look handsome. I have no problem doing those things, you know, but if you have a problem voicing or telling the other person, it's all insecurity. If you have a problem telling the person you look really nice, you know, that your hairstyle really like, I like that hairstyle. Um, I like your makeup. I like the way you dress today, or I like that suit that you're wearing, you know, sometimes because uh, people are insecure, they don't want to like share and tell that person that because they feel like, oh, it's going to go to their head and next thing they're going to start flirting with any other person, with all, you know, other people. And that's another thing. You can't be flirtatious when you're in a relationship. I'm sorry. I know I'm going to lose some people, but if you're going to be in a relationship and you're trying to be committed to somebody, you can't be flirting with Tom, Dick and Harry or Mary, Sally and Carmen. You know, you got to be devoted to that one person That's because right. the Bible even says, you know, a double minded man or woman are unstable in all their ways. So if you can figure out the one person that you want in your life and the person has to be single. I'm sorry. You can't, you know, I'm not going there, but the Bible is true. And, it, and I'm saying it has to be a single man that you're going after. And you, it has to be a single woman that you're going after. You, you understand? So, um, you can't be flirting with every broom you see with a skirt on. Um, the other thing is, um, you know, in the five love languages is quality time. A lot of people, a, a lot of people, that's my mom passing in the back. A lot of people <laughs> don't understand that you, um, you supposed to spend quality time, especially at the very beginning, when you are starting to get to know the person or you start in the relationship, you start in that date, you have to spend time with the person and for everything in the name of everything that's holy, please don't go on your date with your cell phone and a laptop. And here you are talking to other people why the other person is there, um, supposedly craving or wanting your attention. You know, that's a big no, no. And that right there can break the relationship and don't, don't say, you know, they got to understand me because I'm a busy person. Say if you're in ministry or you're a pastor or you're an apostle, or you're an evangelist, or, you know, you're a singer, you're, you're an actress. You cannot be saying, well, my job do, that's my job. And you know that I have my job. You know what? Well, if you're going to be that busy and you ain't going to have balance in your life, then why even pursue a relationship? And you should pursue a relationship when you actually can find time for the person. Um, the other thing is get, um, acts of service. Um, um, the quality time is one of the most popular um, um, on the list uh, when it comes to a relationship. And it's, um, you know, it's, it's of great, um, um, everybody looks for that part. You know, you want to cuddle, you just want to hear the person's voice, you just want to talk, you just want to have conversations. You know, and by conversations, you know, you can have conversations through text. You can have face-to-face um, -face conversation. Now, you know, um, thank God for this um, 21st century, you know, you can also FaceTime the person. So there's no, um, there's no distance now for to be in a relationship. If you really want to be, there's ways that doors that have been open for you to be able to be in a relationship. Um, acts of service. Meaning, um, you know, um, even as Christians, we're supposed to serve one another, serve our brothers, serve the Bible. I was reading a story the other day, and it, it said, you know, if, you're, if your friend came and knocked on your door because he had a visitor that came in um, during the uh, late night, and um, they asking you to give him like some loaves or some sugar or coffee or tea or whatever, because they don't have anything to give the person that that's visiting them. It said, even um, if, if um, you don't want to get up, that's what the Bible said. I'm just saying it in my own words because of the um, importunity, because of the person like begging you and saying, please give me something. I have a friend that came from a long way and I really have nothing to give him. He said, you will do it. And that's, that's serving, that's serving somebody that's being a friend. So even in relationships, 
um, we are supposed to be friendly enough and, um, you know, to be able to serve one another, you understand, um, serve one another in their needs, you know, and it can be sexually, it can be financially, you know, um, if we can serve one another, then, you know, why are we even in a relationship? physical touch, you know, some people, like I said, like hugs, kisses, I'm one that likes hugs and kisses. Other people will, didn't grow up like that. They don't have that in them, but you can learn. You can learn. There's no such thing as this is the way I am. You know, you would, for love, for the person that you love, you will learn to be, you know, kind. You will learn to be a hugger. You know, you don't have to do it every day. You could take um, one step at a time. But there's no such thing as I don't do that. I don't communicate. I don't speak on a um, messenger. I don't like to talk. No, you have to adjust. <laughs> you have to compromise. You have to find ways to do these things. If that's what it takes for that person to be in your um, in a relationship with you and receiving gifts. You know, I don't really know about anybody that doesn't like to receive a gift. You know, I'm one that I love gifts, you know, um, I, I really, really love gifts and um, of, of any kind, you know, it don't even have to be that expensive. It don't have to be expensive, but I really love gifts. So some people don't care about gifts because they never receive, like I said, again, they, they are upbringing, they never received the gifts. And that's the reason why they were never able to, um, you know, they don't care about it. But because you don't care about it, it doesn't mean that you sh you gotta like force the other person to be like you. You know, like I said, when you come into a relationship, you have to be individuals. It's a two different individuals with two different upbringing from two different places, countries, background, families, etc. So. Um, you have to like, you know, be able to come to a place of compromise and adjust, you know, for the better of the relationship. So um, you learn your language. So you will be equipped to build a marriage that is lasting. Um, the other third realistic thing is the willingness to serve one another, which I already explained. Um, um, number four, uh, realistic expectations, loving even when it's hard. You, uh, when it's difficult, when the person gets angry, when the person doesn't want to talk to you, are you still be still be able to love them at the end of the day? You know, and loving is a choice. You have to make a choice. You say we are all in this together. There was a show that you, they used to sing that song. We're all in this together. So when you know you are in a relationship, you have to be all in or nothing. You know, and the other realistic expectation, I only put five, but I'm pretty sure there's a lot more of it. Compromise and adjust in spite of. Like I said before, you have to come to that place of compromise. You understand? Um, if one makes more money than the other, you have to come to a place of compromise. You can't put the other person down because they don't have or they lack the finances that you wanted them to have. You chose that person. You went and talked to that person. And furthermore, if you even went as far as marrying that person, I'm just going to give this one as an example. When I was in my previous um, marriage, I, um, you know, we were, our, our finances was like on balance. I was making a little bit more money than he was, but I kept pushing him and I kept trying to help him until I got him to get a better job. And, you know, and then he ended up making more money than me. And, um, I was fine with that. You understand? But I didn't, I never put him down because he wasn't making enough money. I helped him. Young, because I had a little bit more knowledge about budgeting and saving and stuff like that. And I push us afloat. Um, you know, some people don't want to do that. Some women don't want to do that. And um, I understand that you want the man to be the man and he has to figure things out. But sometimes men, some men were not taught how to be providers, have to, um, you know, pay the bills, have to budget. You understand? And because they never was taught that, they don't know how to do it. If you know how to do it, then sit down with him and say, honey, come, let's let's do this budget. Let's put our monies together. Let's, um, 
you know, and, and if it's one, one person working, if it's the only the man working and the woman is working, but she knows how to figure it out, she can still sit with him and say, honey, you know what, this is how we do it. You understand? Um, that is love. That is love. Love cares for you in every area of your life. Love is not puffed up. The Bible says in, um, first Corinthians chapter 13, seek it, not her own. It's not easily provoked. You know, so it's not like the person, like the woman is trying to say you're an idiot or something, because some people be like, well, why are you trying to say I can't handle this? No, she's not trying to like put you down. She, she just had a little bit more insight in, into it and she wants you to be. So now I'm going to go with the um, five unrealistics and, um, you know, one of the unrealistic stuff. And I know some people say that I will give you the, I will go to the moon. I will bring you the moon and the stars. Now we know that's unrealistic. You know, it's just cute, but it's unrealistic. There's no way they can get you the moon and the stars, you know, but it's good that they're saying it. And if they mean it, they got to have their actions towards it. Meaning that they're willing to give you everything, you know, to make your world happy. So um, the other one is um, one form of unrealistic possessions, you know, like some people, um, I don't know why people do this. Um, they, they want to pretend to, to be more than what they are, you know, and that's lying. Um, they want to pretend that they have more money than what they actually have because they want to be liked by, by a certain person. Say if the woman has money, the, the guy wants to appear like he has the money, knowing that he doesn't have it. And um, I always say people are going to love you for who you are. And um, if you are truth, truthful about yourself and if you're truthful about who you are, you know, if they really love you, they're going to love you with what you have, what you bring to the table. You know, whether you bring in nothing or whether you bring in something, if the person truly loves you, they will love you for that. So that's another unrealistic thing. You know, when you um trying to be um, something that you're not or, or, or pretending to have what you don't have. False promises, false expectations. You know, that's an unrealistic expectation. When you have false expectation about the person, you understand, um, you're trying to, um, you know, make a dollar out of 50 cents. That's false expectations. Um, you know, um, and I'm not saying that there's no, no ways that, you can, um, you know, make a dollar out of 50 cents. Like you can invest, you get, you get knowledgeable on stocks or you do different things to try to like, um, you know, gain, gain assets. That's different. But when you're trying to like, you know, like I, I remember somebody said to me, um, um, they just made the statement. They, be, they were like, oh, you got um, champagne taste. Well, we're Kool-Aid money. I don't know if you ever heard that. Mm -hmm. When somebody has champagne taste, we're Kool-Aid money. Meaning you like the finer things in life, but you don't have what it, the money that it takes to get those things. And there's nothing real wrong with having, um, you know, good expectations. Like I like finer things in life. I, I truly do. I like, you know, when I bought my house, I made sure it was big enough. It, it had all those rooms and all the all the, the, the appliances and stuff that I liked it. So, um, you know, I don't, I don't own a house now, but um, when I did, I, I made sure it had everything that I, that I went into. And I, and I take pride in like decorating it and fixing it up. And, and I, I had an eye for like stuff, for like, you know, the furniture, this type of furniture, this type of, you know, decors, artwork, et cetera, et cetera. So <laughs> I, um, <laughs> um, so I, I did, you know, make it a home and I'm, and I'm saying that even when I was selling the house, the, the people that was buying the house was like, can you leave all the furniture here? Everything just looks perfect. And I was like, uh, you get in the house, you're not getting my furniture. I need my furniture for where I'm going, but it was a compliment. So, um, like I said, you know, um, you have to get to that place where, you know, you can't be selfish. Um, you can't be, um, and, and have that attitude of entitlement. Like, but like I said before, um, you know, and also you have to, you have to be able to, you know, some people expect you to read their minds. 
And I'm saying that they use this mental thing. And they say, they say, you, well, if you really know me, you would, you would know what I'm trying to say, or you would know what I'm trying to, like, I always, I, I told somebody one day, and this is on my job. Listen, I didn't went, I didn't, I failed reading mine 101. <laughs> and, and with that, I'm saying that, you know, some people expect you to read their minds. Like how, how in God's name, am I going to know what's going on in your head 24 seven? I, I, I barely know what's going on in my head, you know, in my own head. I'm trying to keep my head straight. Like, you know, some people try to make you like, oh my God, like they want you to know every time what they're thinking. Oh, you should have known that I wouldn't have. How would I know that if you don't communicate verbally, That's right. verbally, you know, some people have a hard time communicating verbally and you have to get out of that state. You have to get out, get out of that comfort zone. I like break it. Jesus broke, um, you know, broke the veil. So we can all have access, access to love, access to forgive, access to relationship, access to marriage, access to everything freely, you know? Um, so when people say, you know, you, 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 you know, you had read my mind, read my mind. Like you should have read, read my mind. Like, sir. <laughs> The only person, unless God gives us um, insight or God speaks to us through his Holy Spirit to let us know what you're thinking, it's very nearly impossible. Um, the other thing before I go to my co-host is getting, um, like I said um, in one of the podcasts before, one of the songs that I truly, truly love is um, the song, Getting to Know You getting to know all about you and that's in um the movie the king and i um it's a very very nice movie that i like and it's about um this american lady that goes um you know into this indigenous um place and meets this um foreign king and he has like all these kids and servants and wives and whatnot and she has to teach them english and the song says getting to know you getting to know all about you and um when you're in a relationship that's what you want to do you want to get to know the person you want to get to know their likes their dislikes mm -hmm. you want to get to know um what they like to eat what what they don't like to eat what makes them angry what makes them happy what makes them sad what makes them um you know joyful so all of those things you want to know in a relationship um you know know that life happens and understand that even when promises are made that sometimes promises can be broken situations can happen that may alter the outcome that um that doesn't mean that you are not loved or considered you know, just because somebody promised you that they will do certain things, you know, life happens, situations happen. You can promise somebody, you know what, I'm going to buy you a Louis Vuitton bag. But then a bill came out and the bill went higher than it, than it was supposed to be. And you kind of like, you know, um, you you went and you um, didn't realize that the bill went up and blah, 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 blah. And um, other things came down. The car broke down. The, you needed new tires. All of a sudden, you went to the dealer or to the gas station and they say, sir, you need new tires or, or you got a flat and now you got to buy tires. And when they checked it, they say you need all your tires need to be removed. So now the money that you had to buy the Louis Vuitton for your girl, um, you know, now you have to use it for that. So you got to have unrealistic expectation and just tell the truth. Listen, I, I still promise you that I will get it to you later on and keep your promise. Like, you know, whenever you're able to, matter of fact, even surprise her because sometimes it's even better when you surprise the person and they're not really expecting it. You know, like they totally forgot about it and then you show up with it, you know. So be a man and a woman of your word. If you make a promise to someone, make sure that you fulfill it. Um, habitual lying is a narcissistic and manipulative way. You know, people who always lie and say, I told you I'm going to do it all oh, next month, next month, next week, next day. And they never, <laughs> they never accomplish or they never, um, bring it to pass, you know, and they keep lying. I, I hate liars. I, I have to say, I hate liars. I hate anyone that lies, um, not hate, but I dislike the action of lying. You know, I'd be like, you know, you need help. 
if you're always lying. You know, one should try to control, you shouldn't try to control the other person's ways, behavior, or self. You know, you got to know that they're entitled if they want to throw a tantrum um, because they're, um, they're angry, let them be angry, let them express, because some people need to have that expression taken out. They, they can't bundle everything in. One shouldn't try to control the other person's way, behavior, or self. You should um, give each other a chance to be themselves unapologetically and comfortable, comfortably. You should allow people to be themselves comfortably. Don't make an ocean out of a glass of water. Learn to apologize when you're wrong. Sometimes um, accept to be um, the wrong for the sake of the relationship. The Bible says, why you not rather suffer to be wrong? Why don't you don't rather suffer to be defrauded? Meaning that, you know, even though you know you're right, you know, sometimes just accept the wrong just for the peace of the relationship. And that's love. That's, right. that's love, you know. And that's you denying yourself. And I'm not saying do it every single time, but there are going to be times that you're going to say, you know what? I don't want to argue anymore. It's getting late. I'm tired. Um, whatever, yada, yada, yada. And, um, you know, just let's call it a truce. Okay, you're right. You win, you know, whatever. Baby, let's, let's, let's do this. You know, I love you. Let's, let's move on. Trust is built. I heard this from a preacher. Trust is built by the consistency of your fulfillment. Meaning that people will learn to trust you in a relationship when you prove yourself to always um, keep your word. You know, so trust is built with the consistency of your fulfillment. Meaning um, the more, the, every time you say you're going to do something, they can expect you to say, I love a man that is um, a man of honor. Like they said, a man that sticks to his word, a man that says, you know what, I'm going to do it. And you see them do it, you know, and that's how God expects us to be. You know, God never promised us something and never came and did it. And if he didn't do it, he didn't do it because he saw, like the scripture said, his thoughts are higher than, than our thoughts and his ways are higher than our ways. And because he sees he is the beginning and the end, he sees the beginning and he also sees the ending. So sometimes when God don't allow us to have something, certain things, it's because he knows the outcome and he loves us that much that he's, he is a, a father. He's a good father. So he tries to protect us from the unseen, you know, and from the unknown. Um, What's the other thing? Um, be a conduit of love, meaning be a bridge, be a repairer of the bridge, be one that, that brings love, not hate. You know, um, also reciprocate it when given. You know, um, if somebody is, uh, is always giving to you and somebody is always nice to you, um, um, whether it's in a, in a, on the job or something, you know, reciprocate it. You know, say thank you, um, you know, and do something also for the person, you know, we shouldn't all, always be like, like I said, me, 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 always expecting just us to receive. Um, the last thing is selfishness. Anything you can do, I can do better. That's being selfish, you know, and that's um, telling somebody that you are better than them. And, um, you know, because of the person is not as studious as you are whether it's biblically or whether it's in the natural, you trying to be um, egotistic. That's ego. You know, when you're trying to like, you can't be in a relationship with somebody. So you're always going to be putting them down and telling the person that, um, <laughs> you, you know, you're so stupid. You know, you, you, you don't read like I read. I've read a lot of books. I've, uh, you know, I've, I've sat with the great. I, I, I'm like, you know, I'm like the top notch. And um, you, you, you are peon, you know, then leave the person alone because I'm pretty sure God has somebody that will love that person just the way they are. Like Bruno Mars says in that song, I, um, you are amazing just the way you are. And there will be somebody that will love that person. You know, you don't have to bad mouth them. You don't have to um, tell them off. You don't have to, um, you know, 
um, make them feel less than because God loves the poor, the rich, the middle class. God loves us all together. And I always say, you know, the same amount of blood that he shed for one, he shed for everybody. So he doesn't love, I, regardless, despite of title, I don't care what title you have. God doesn't love that person that has major titles or that went to theology school more than the one that is just starting and just got saved. He loves us all equally. And his word confirms it when he said he makes no respecter of persons. So we have to get it. I get it. Do you? Do you get it? <laughs> um, yeah. Lastly, unpack your anger, your bitterness, um, because it um, it's rottenness to the bones. So meaning unpack everything from your past. You know, when you're trying to go into a relationship, don't come in with your old nasty ways, your ways of, oh, this is how I, no, 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 no. You have to learn to change. You got to learn to change. Like they say, we, we win more bees with honey. Um, the other thing, where are these emotions? Um, try to, if you are a person that is always angry and bitter, find out where, why these emotions are happening, where they're coming from. You know, nobody wants to go into a relationship. I don't care how cute you are. I don't care if you're a 10 or, 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 or a 20. Uh, you know, I will, I will throw your, your 20 down if you come with me with a bad attitude and, you know, bad um, um, perception and, and, and a bad, um, you know, now you're not going to come in in a relationship with me and try to like make me feel less than. You know, we, we supposed to, they said beside every good man, there's a good beside, and then it said behind, beside, meaning next to a good man, there is a good woman. So um, both women and men, you know, and I have seen relationships where women also talk down on their men, like tell them, oh, you, you this, you that, and you know, you're not supposed to do that. We're supposed to be in a relationship where we can build and grow together, you know, build each other up, amen? Um, the other thing is have healthy desires and godly desires that line up with God's word. If you're a Christian, like I am, like sister Julius, like my brother, minister Orville is my sibling, my blood brother. Um, you know, if you have godly desires, you are going to strive to do things the way that God does things according to the word of God. I don't want to be in a relationship with somebody who claims to be saved, but they, like I used to tell my brother, they shave. They're not Christians. They're Christophers. So I don't want somebody who is pretending to be saved, but they really not don't have a relationship with God. Don't pray. Don't fast. Don't study the word of God. Don't seek the word of God. Um, you know, because eventually it will show. You can pretend by so, but so far. And I have seen men that went into um, way back when, you know, in my, in my teens and going into my early 20s, I saw some friends of mine that these guys came in the church and they, ooh, you know, they were shouting and ooh you know, acting and the whole, the whole nine yards. And the minute they got married, they wanted nothing else to do with church. So we know that they only did it because they wanted to marry the person. And, um, you know, like I said, eventually it will show. So, you know, with that, you have to be careful. Uh, we have to ask the Holy Spirit for direction, you know, getting a partner I always pray at least, you know, that the Holy Spirit would lead me and guide me that we will feel, we both will feel a witness. You know, it's better when you do it God's way. It's better when you follow God's word. Um, it's, 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 it's beautiful because um, the Bible said um, marriage is honorable and the bed is on the file. You understand? So, you know, we can't adapt our ways to the ways of the world. So we can't do things the way the people of the world do it. We have to do it the way that God, God does it. And even if you fall, even if you fall into sexual sin, you know, you can still get back up. You can still ask God for forgiveness 
and move on and know that God will still bless you if he's, especially if you're doing it honestly and you, and you actually. So I think I've said enough. Um, I'm going to hand it over to um, my brother Orville. I know he was having a lot of time and then I'm going to leave it to Julia so she can finish. Okay. Can you hear us? Okay, look like he went out. So, okay, um, I, I don't know. The devil is such a liar, you know. He's fight, really fighting here. And I know he's very motivated and he gets very emotional when he's um, doing it. So, Julie, you you continue. Wait till he comes back. He's probably coming right back. No, he's not going to come right back. <laughs> uh, all right. All right. Well, when we have expectations on relationships, I was looking up how, because I've been married a long time. And, you know, when we have, I've had so many different relationships, but the longest relationship I've had has been with my husband. Yes. You know, and my children, because I've had children since I've been married. So, <laughs> you know, that's been my biggest relationship. So, but the Bible says in Proverbs 18, 22, it says, whoso findeth the wife findeth the good thing and obtain yes. favor of the Lord. Yes, but it's amen. how you treat your wife too. Yes. Because you can find a wife, but it's how you treat your wife. Yes. You know, that's how you obtain favor of the Lord. Say you that. Know? And when I'm thinking of that, I thought about how Abraham, when Abraham had to go into a certain place, when he was... When he went to see, when he had to tell Amalek that Sarah was his um, sister, mm -hmm. you know, he said to protect her, he had to say, this is my sister. That's in Genesis 20 and 2. And yes. Abraham said of Sarah, his wife, she is my sister. And Abimelech, king of Gear sent and took Sarah but in as a custom you know they're not allowed to sleep with the women right away they have a purification that they have to go through yes so thank God he didn't take her and sleep with her so yes. what happened was God spoke to Abimelech and told him don't you touch that woman and you know <laughs> he said that's a married woman Yes. He said, but I thought she was single, you know. Because he lied. He lied. You know, Abraham lied, but to protect her. Yes. Because he didn't want him to kill them, you know, and take her anyway. So when yes. God spoke to Abimelech, he had to, you know, it was, Abraham did it to protect his wife. So that, he did it in a, in a good sense. So, you know. Abraham was protect, did it to protect, not in order to, 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 to let another man take his wife. Yeah, but he, but he was scared. To protect his wife. Yes. You know, even though Abimelech took his wife, he was like, Lord, you better protect my wife, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, God did protect her because he showed Abimelech, don't you touch that woman. You know, he tormented that man all night long. That man could not sleep. <laughs> yes. He, he was going to put leprosy morning. on him and, and all his servants. Yeah, <laughs> he said, he, he said, come and get your wife. He said, why did you lie? He said, well, I didn't want you to kill us. He said, boy, take your wife and go. Yes. He said, I will not touch you. And he said, pray for me. He made him. He said, now get Abraham to pray for you so that you could be healed. Because yes. You don't let him pray for you. You're not going to get healed. So he, he, you know, God knows how to do things to protect. But he said, because he found a good thing. Yes. He a good thing. He know how to treat his wife. You know, and there was a promise there, you know. But then, yes. you know, you know, because when I was young and married, you know, I used to argue with my husband a lot. And I called my aunt one day and my aunt told me, JJ, go read Proverbs 14 and 1. And I said, all right. So I went home and I read forth, Proverbs 14 and 1. And it says, every wise woman build her house, 
but of the foolish plucked it down with her hand. Pluck it down, yes. And I said, Lord, you got to show me what that means. And it says, when you build something, you got to count the cost. Yes. Everybody wants to run into a marriage and never count the cost. Say that. But once you are married, you got to count the cost to stay married. But yes. it says a foolish woman plucks it down with her hands. What yes. does that mean? It takes nothing to destroy things. All you got to do is tear up a paper, throw things away. And that's how you destroy a marriage. You just throw it away, you know, but even a man can do the same thing. And, yes. you know, I said, I, I begin to read through every chapter of how a marriage is supposed to be. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 7 and 3, it says, let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence and likewise also the wife unto her husband there are things we have to give in order to get we have to give to each other a marriage takes give a marriage is give and take we have yes to give yes it to is each other what we what we do because if not you go looking outside of your marriage exactly a marriage has different appetites you know, and you have to be satisfied in your marriage. So you're not looking outside your marriage. That's why it says do benevolence because my appetite may not be your appetite, but you have to give your do benevolence in the marriage. Yes. You no. Know? And you have to teach because sometimes when you're married and you're young, you know, you might not, you know, you have to teach your partner what's pleasing to you. And what yes. they have to teach you what's pleasing to them. Because what they like. You're both young. Yes. And that's what a marriage is about. That's why the Bible says marriage is honorable and the bed undefiled. Why? The because bed is on the fire. Because each other yes. how to be married. Because nobody gives you a handbook and say, okay, this is how to be married. And, you know, this is the, the rule book on marriage. You got to learn this from scratch. Yes. <laughs> you know, so, but thank God you have the word of God that teaches you your guidelines on what marriage is, you know. Can I just and say one, that, one thing before you continue? Um, when okay. you say that do benevolence, right? Um, some of it can apply for sexually. And like you said, you know, you got to um, show the person sexually what you like. And, and likewise, he has to show you what he likes sexually. Right. Um, um, if one of the persons is a virgin, then you have to be patient and you got to let them, you know, um, go into it and try to like uh, prepare them, you know, and also show them, you know, um, things. Because if the person was a virgin, never had a sex, it's like a guitar, you know, that you never had a sound yeah. um, go come out of it until you strung it so you have to be patient with the person when they when they are virgin so that way they would know like you know don't go and um just wham bam thank you ma'am you know you want them to enjoy it too but that's what i'm saying when you're young you have to teach each other how to yes. marry it's not just you jump right into things because then that doesn't show the compassion of a marriage Yes. And that's how you consummate a marriage when both parties are involved in the marriage. Yes. You know, that's, that's correct. What I'm saying whoso find a wife, find a good thing and obtain favor of the Lord is how you treat your wife. Yes. It's how you that's how you obtain favor of the Lord, how you're treating your wife. It's not you can't obtain favor of the Lord if you're treating your wife any old kind of way. Tell her shut up and do this for me and do this. You, you become ruler. No, your wife is 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 part of your flesh. You two get my become, You are no longer two. You become one flesh. Oh. Yes. You know, and I mean, grant you, you don't become one flesh overnight. But that becomes that you are no longer one. You, I yes. mean, you are no longer two, but one person. Yeah, one person. Because you, you have become, she takes on your name. You know, grant you today, in today's society has become different. She keeps her name and you, you know, it, it, you know, that's, but I mean, when you go through the Bible way, it, it she becomes you. Yes. You know, she takes on your, your name and, 
you are no longer one, but you no longer two, but one flesh. You become that's one. What the Bible says, you know, especially on the honeymoon. Love- that's when the consummation happens. You know, yeah. that's when uh, the jo- the joining happens. You know, um, in that sexual act. You know, your two bodies yeah. join together there and but that, um, beca- that makes you become one flesh that makes you become one flesh yep. and i like when they say yeah. um you know that couples after like a long time they started looking like each other like i don't know like they face mm-hmm. um facial stuff yeah. started looking like each other <laughs> and then i started going to ruth how we look for friendships yes and i loved how ruth discovered the friendship of her mother-in-law Yes. So that's how our friendship should be, like a mother-in-law to a daughter-in-law. And that's how friendship should always be. But that's mostly how some marriages should be too. Because it Absolutely. says that Ruth said in Ruth 1, 16 and 17, and Ruth said, entreat me not to leave thee or to return from following after thee. For whether thou goest, I will go. And whether thou and where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God my God. Where thou diest, I will die. Will I die? And there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me, and more also, if aught but death part thee and me. Look at that. I, I read that. I was like, oh my God, that sounds like a marriage you know but it was a friendship and you know how people long to have that deep of friendship with someone and some people do have that deep of relationship with another woman that they can say wow that's my best friend and i would like a ride or die you know that's the new saying ride or die we ride die. ride die together because why because we can, I can call somebody at the middle of the, the middle of the day, middle of the hour, and they're always ready to pick up the phone and talk with me. I can cry with that person. I can, whatever I need, that person is there for me. If I need 20 bucks, oh, sister, you got it. Don't worry about it. I, c- come get it. If I need food, they got food. You know, that's a ride or die. That's yes. whatever I need, they got, you know, and that's how it should be. That's the friendships we always look for. And so yes. like those are the hardest to find. Yeah. Especially today. Because everybody's our, always out for themselves. Yes. In a relationship, it's supposed to be like that. Your husband's supposed to be your ride or die person. Yes. But now, you know, because me and my husband have been in a relationship, it's, it's going to be 39 years. Next month, September 18th, it's going to be 39 years. Yes. And it's like... We, we are no longer two people we it's like we are one one flesh we we if if we're gone away from each other too long it's like where you at you know we, yeah like, we talk to each other all day long it's like you know That's it's beautiful. just like that you know and then i was looking at psalms this is how we these are people we have to be careful with you know, everybody else we, we are close to, but this is the person we have to be careful with. And these are people we shouldn't have to be careful with. But it says in Psalms 55, 12 to 14, for it was not my enemy that reproached me that yes. I could have borne it. Neither was it he that hated me that did it magnify himself evil. against me. Then I could have hid myself from him, but it was thou a my man, equal, my equal, my, my guide equal. and mine acquaintance. Yes. We sweet counsel together and we walked unto the house of God in company. Man, when I read that, I was like, Lord, sometimes we have to be careful who we keep company with. Yes. Some people, they're jealous. They're and jealousy. Like, Why are is they jealous? Out of this world. And you're like, Lord, and they want everything you have, including your husband. Your hu- you well, say, or your, or, or it like, can be oh, the other way. It can be their your wife. to yourself. Exactly. That, or it can be a wife too that they, they and are lusting they after. they will conspire to get your husband. They will do everything yes. in their power. And sometimes That's when jealousy. You tell, and you can tell your husband, listen, be careful with that one. Yes. And you be, 
and your husband be looking at you, are you sure? I, I, I look, I know the look, don't do it. Let me tell you, God, now, God gives us women, our, uh, uh, like they say, a sixth sense or that intuition. Yes. We have like yes. a radar that's connected with heaven. Radar. And when, like, I, I, I hate to use this word, but I'm going to yes. use it because that's the only thing I can. When a heifer comes and she coming after your husband, that radar goes off. You can, you, can, you can sense it. I don't know. There's yeah. something that God gives us women that we can sense it. Because when, yeah. you know, people was coming yeah. after my husband, I could, I can sense it. And then it got to the point that God started yeah. showing me in dreams, the person. And I was like, you know, I kept praying and praying, but it got to the point that, you know, when things escalated, you know, to, to the point where, you know, you don't want to stay in a relationship where you're being dis disrespected, where you're not being provided for, where you're not being loved. You know, you got to come to a, a, a place where um, you say, okay, here it is. This is the situation. You know, this is no longer uh, uh, a good environment. So what is it that you want to do? You know, do you yeah. want to stay? Do you want to make it better? Or do you prefer to leave? And um, yeah. it will be okay. It's better if we part our ways. And that's the conclusion yeah. that we came to. It was better to part our ways. Because, um, mm -hmm. you know, you can't be um, this in tug of war. You know, you're pulling to the right and I'm pulling to the left. You have to be in unity and harmony. And when there's no more harmony there, somebody's going to leave. When somebody's not happy, they're going to leave. I got Luke 17 and 1. It says, it is impossible, but that offenses will come. But woe unto whom through, through which but offenses. woe unto him through whom they come. Let me yes. tell you something. People will offend. And yes. it is impossible, but they will come. But they will come, definitely. By whom they come. Because yes. let me tell you something. People will offend. And yes. You know, it, it's just inevitable. You know? But the Bible says, woe by whom they come. It's better for them to tie a millstone around their neck than to offend you. Because you better say when that. They, when, they, when they take something from you, I told you. Uh, I said this on, on my prayer line. My daughter had a locket. I bought her a locket uh, for her 16th birthday. And someone stole her locket. We were, they were living in our home. And they stole her locket. And wow. she wanted to, to go after this girl in our home. And I said, no, Teresa, you got to leave it alone. And I said, don't worry, she's going to lose more than just that. No more than three to four days later, the girl let out a scream in our house that everybody in the house was like, oh, my God, what was that? That girl lost her cousin. Mm. We were like, see, I told you, you never have to retaliate. Yes. They lose more than what they steal. Yeah. I say, you will never have to retaliate. And I can replace that locket. She can never replace her cousin. Yes. So I said, don't ever retaliate. You never have to fight for something so small. I said, don't you ever. I said, man, they might take something from you and think they won the whole world. Honey, yeah. they're going to suffer for that. Say okay. that. They don't, they don't think, they don't think about the things that you, you have to go through or you have to face. Look, you took something that was mine yes. and I wasn't ready to release that. Are you kidding me? I was trying to fight for my marriage and you, you trying to take what's mine. You yes. You never do that. You don't take another woman's husband. I'm sorry. Yes. I, I, I'm one. Oh, vice versa. A man can't take another yeah, man's wife. and a woman don't take another man's wife. Child, boy, they don't know what they're doing. They, they're they playing with you fire. You know what? But some people are daring like that. You know, they're very daring and they be like, you know what? I um, want it. And they all, they you know, they don't realize that it's the enemy influencing them. And they don't, they don't realize that it's the enemy using them. Because they always feel like they, he should be better with me or she should be better with me. You know? But it's better, it's better for them to, to, to not have married. And then, you know, and it's not right. You can't yeah. be doing things like that. 
And well, it's not, it's not out. God. Same. It's not God. Definitely. It's not the Holy Ghost. If we, if we really say yeah. that we love God and that we know God and that we follow his word, then you know that that is yeah. not scriptural. That's not biblical. The Holy Ghost is not leading yeah. you. That's all you. That's your flesh. And, you know, I pray that, um, you know, we're not trying to offend anybody tonight, but I pray that yeah. the person would, um, would take heed to the word of God because the Bible, um, the scripture said, um, you know, um, the scripture says, you know, um, oh Lord Jesus, I'm trying to like, remember, uh, you know, thy word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against thee. And when you let that word, um, you know, resonate in you and you, you let that word stay within you, there's just certain things you just won't do. Yeah. But I believe every marriage needs work because that's why even marriages need to go on. My, my son, my son and his wife, they've been married 10 years and they date. Mm -hmm. they, 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 mommy, watch my kids. We're going out on a date and they date. And me and my husband, we go on dates. I say, honey, we, we, we're going out to eat. We're going here. We're going there. And we ain't got, we don't have children. We can pick up and go. We're selfish now. We are at that selfish stage. We don't got no children. Yes. They're going to drop our grandchildren. Not tonight. Tonight is mommy and daddy's night. We are, we are out the door. We don't yes. got no children to do no more. So we can be selfish like that. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, that's a good, a good, um, a good thing, you know, that you're doing because it's in a, a uh, when you are in a relationship, you're supposed to, um, you know, it's a give and take, you know, like the song said, it's yeah. a game of give and take. You can't hurry love. You just got to wait, That's right. you know? Um, so it's, um, it's you doing, um, what's best for each other, you know? And like you said, yeah. you got to keep that fire burning, just like our spiritual life. We have, we also have to keep, um, you know, the oil of the, of the, the anointing, um, within us, that fire burning. Um, but right. it's about that time now, you know, um, I'm sorry that Orville wasn't able to come back on. Yeah. I, I know he was having te technical difficulties and he was really trying hard, but I hope that you learned something. We are going to air this also on YouTube. So we are, um, expecting you to please go to YouTube and subscribe to our channel. And this is, um, on the yeah. word that true, that's W O R T H D A T R U. Um, we are coming to you live. Uh, we're going to try to come again once um, next month. And I will also announce it on Facebook when we are coming back on live. So I pray that God bless you. And I pray that something that was said today, um, that it pricked your heart and that, you know, we, we all in this together, we're trying to be better Christians and we're trying to um, be better servants um, one to, towards another. And yes, we are our brother and our sister's keeper, you know, and the Bible even say you shouldn't covet that which um, belongs to your brother or to your sister. So that's the word right. of God. Um, with that said, you know, you are empowered and you are enough. And you are excellent and you are especially loved. We, uh, we love you. God bless you. Yes. Have a blessed and fantabulous week. God bless. Amen. God bless.